All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking probably the most seriously over-the-top beautiful day of 2024. Here in the midsummer at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a Friday afternoon, July 26th. 72 degrees here at Bugs in a Jar Farm as I wait for the latest onslaught of vacation rental guests. So guys, you know, being Friday, I'm over here on my uh, on the mainstream media putting together my Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant and this was just going to be one of many stories. Uh, this one out of the Guardian uh, <clears throat> for anyone and I can't imagine anybody a regular listener to this channel being uh, in, in this number but, but if there's anybody suffering the delusion that the United States is going to uh, start phasing out fossil fuels uh, regardless of who is going to be in the White House uh, including that newest one uh, whose name I can't remember right now oh yes uh, Carmela or whatever her name is if, 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 if there's any clueless moron suffering a delusion even if the Democrats uh, regain uh, and, and listen to me regain control of the White House there you go uh, which is which uh, was a great Freudian slip anybody who thinks that makes one difference in the production of fossil fuels uh, on this planet pull your head out of your ass it ain't gonna happen whether or not Donald Trump is in the White House and of course he will be cause that is gonna happen but anyway and before I go into this article uh, about how the US became the world's biggest fossil fuel state otherwise known as a petro state which is exactly what the United States is under uh, Joe Biden uh, just took uh, Trump's drill baby drill directive and put it on steroids you understand that Joe Biden has drilled and produced more fossil fuels than Donald Trump ever could in his biggest wet dream all right uh, and, and became a petro state but before I go into this I just want to mention for those of you not aware of the coast of Louisiana which was pretty much just turned into an environmental sacrifice zone by the oil industry the oil drilling industry you've probably heard of Cancer Alley roughly uh, New Orleans to uh, to uh, I would say New Orleans to Galveston Texas uh, the coast of Louisiana then going up the Mississippi to Baton Rouge that armpit of the country but all through there the Louisiana East Texas coast it is the oil industry and of course its twin sister the petrochemical industry which is you know the ugly twin sister of the oil industry is what has turned uh, the coast of Louisiana and East Texas into what Chris Hedges would correctly call a sacrifice zone uh, the the land and the people in it so anyway with that as a backdrop we're going to go over to the good old Guardian you know the Guardian every once in a while despite what Andy the Gardener says comes up with a pretty good straight ahead uh, ain't gonna happen 
uh, story. And uh, all right, take it away, the Guardian. This used to, and, and see if you can figure out my subtle editorial tweaking. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of editorial license during this article. See if you can figure out the editorial license I'm taking. This used to be a beautiful place. How the U.S. became the world's biggest fossil fuel state. To witness how the United States has become the world's unchallenged oil and gas behemoth is to contemplate the scene from John Allaire's home situated on a small spit of coastal land on the fraying pancake flat western flank of Louisiana. <clears throat> Allaire's looming neighbor barely a mile east across a ship channel that has been pushed into the Gulf of Mexico, a ship channel that was pushed in there by the oil industry years ago. Okay, just so you understand who put the ship channel in there, it was the oil industry. Uh... Lair's looming neighbor is a hulking, liquefied natural gas, otherwise known as LNG plant, served by Leviathan ships shuttling its chilled cargo overseas. Another such terminal lies a few miles to the west, yet another to the north. The theme continues even in Allaire's seaward vista alongside a boneyard of old oil rigs. A new floating offshore LNG platform is in the works. <clears throat> I'm pretty much surrounded, said Allaire, a retired oil industry engineer. Huh. A retired oil industry engineer is now whining about being run out of town by the gas industry. I'm pretty much surrounded, said Allaire, a retired oil industry engineer who has a trailer, a couple of friendly dogs, in a patch of marshland and beach in Cameron Parish. Yet another gas export plant is planned just a few hundred yards from the retired oil industry engineer's property, while his existing imposing neighbor, which the retired oil industry engineer compares to Las Vegas due to its incandescent flaring of gas into the night sky, is on track to expand to become one of the largest, you know, liquid, liquid natural gas facilities in the world. <clears throat> we don't really have a Gulf Coast in the U.S., said the retired oil industry engineer. We have the East Coast, the West Coast, and the carbon coast. This is simply a sacrifice zone for the oil and gas industry, said the retired oil industry engineer. The rise of the U.S. as the world's oil and gas powerhouse has come at an astonishing pace. Within just the last decade, Congress lifted a ban on exporting crude oil and the U.S. became one of the world's leading oil exporters, elbowing aside classic petrostates like the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait. In that time frame, 
U.S. exports of gas frozen to liquid form and shipped also started in earnest and last year, last year under Joe Biden, America became the world's leader. Um, quote, to go from zero to billions of barrels is just stunning, said David DeSmooks, an energy expert at Louisiana State University. It can be hard to comprehend. And this is John Sturman of MIT. The U.S. has become a petrostate and is still, even under President Biden, permitting new drilling. Ha, huh. do you think so? <clears throat> Domestic, meaning here in the U.S., oil and gas production turbocharged by the advance of hydraulic fracturing, commonly known as fracking, has rocketed. No country in history has extracted as much oil as the United States has in each of the past six years. Four of those under Joe Biden, two of those under Donald Trump, with a fifth of all, was it 20 percent of all oil drilled in 2023 being American flavored. U.S. gas production also tops the global charts, having surged 50 percent in the past decade. Every hour of every day, on average, around 1 million barrels of oil and 2 million tons of gas are sucked up from oil and gas fields from Texas to Appalachia to Alaska. The United States carbon uh, the United States hydrocarbon dominance coming as experts, experts warn there can be no new fossil fuel projects if the world is to avoid climate breakdown challenges conventional assumption about what makes a petrostate. <clears throat> While the vast, diverse U.S. economy does not hinge upon oil and gas like Libya's and Kuwait's economies do, some regions have become hooked on industry incomes, research shows, and uh, for decades uh, the, the coast of Louisiana has been, uh, well, I, I guess the only possible industry uh, competing ag against uh, big oil on the coast of uh, Louisiana uh, would have been, uh, would either be big sugar or maybe shrimping. But my guess is you add sugar and shrimping together and they would not begin to penetrate uh, the oil and the sister petrochemical industry in the coast of Louisiana and the rest uh, in East Texas, you know, where they're talking about regions that have become hooked on industry incomes. Uh, Louisiana and Texas are certainly petrostates. Um, as that guy at, from MIT says, the U.S. has become a petrostate and still is under, uh, and, and, and if anybody thinks for one second that Kamala Harris, 
uh, 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 again, is going to be any different than Joe Biden. Uh, it makes zero difference whether Kamala Harris or Donald Trump are in the White House. It's going to be drill, baby, drill. Uh, there is no chance that the U.S. is going to voluntarily cut back fossil fuel production. It is pedal to the metal with uh, getting more and more fossil fuels out of the ground in this country. Nationally, though it's been a mostly unheralded, unheralded ascension, <clears throat> Nationally, though, it's been a mostly unheralded ascension. Quote, I bet if you ask 10 people in the U.S. which country was the world's biggest oil producer, most would say Saudi Arabia said this mooks. That narrative is so imprinted, I'm not sure many clueless fucking morons would even mention the United States, close quote. Yet, it is wealthy countries such as the U.S. that have spearheaded oil and gas expansions in recent years, even as they vowed to restrain dangerous global heating. Uh, without the U.S., global gas production would have actually declined over the past two years, but thanks to Joe Biden, not thanks to Donald Trump, thanks to Joe Biden with uh, his co-pilot Kamala Harris, uh, it is the United States is the reason that gas production has grown on the planet. This is Ed Markey, the Democratic senator and proponent of the, the Green New Deal. Yes, the Green New Deal. Ed Markey, quote, The United States cannot preach temperance from a bar stool. We cannot tell other countries to reduce their greenhouse gases as we export oil and gas to them. When the crude oil export ban was lifted, and I'm pretty sure, connect, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that the crude oil export ban was lifted by Joe Biden, not Donald Trump could be wrong on that, but whenever it was, when the crude oil export ban was listed over my opposition, the U.S. prioritized big oil over the planet. Everything I warned about in 2015, 2015, uh, that, that would mean Obama Everything I, I warned in 2015 has come true, and it will only get worse as the years go by and oil companies, such as the ones that uh, this guy John Allaire used to work for, and oil companies rush fossil fuels to the highest bidders close quote, that such a boom has occurred during Democrat Joe Biden's presidency is not only inconvenient for Biden, or should we now say, is not only inconvenient for Kamala Harris, who has called the client, oh, well, we got to go back to Joe Biden because I'm not sure Kamala has called the climate crisis an existential threat. Biden, who has called the climate crisis, quote, an existential threat and offered a now broken promise of, quote, no more drilling on federal lands 
period, close quote, but also Donald Trump, who has pledged to drill, baby drill, if, meaning when, he returns to the White House and has lambasted Biden falsely for supposedly shutting down U.S. energy production, which of course is one more of Donald Trump's just absolute, unadulterated, horse shit, big fat lies. Joe Biden with uh, Kamala Harris uh, with her lips attached to his ass, uh, have taken fossil fuel production under his watch to levels never dreamed of by Donald Trump after they both campaigned on no more drilling on federal lands, period. Although, uh, do keep in mind that uh, most uh, fossil fuel production is still on private lands. <clears throat> it is therefore not politically expedient for either Democrats or Republicans to fully extol how the United States has become the world's leading oil and gas dealer, even as processing plants pipelines, and shipping terminals were unfurled at a galloping pace along the Gulf Coast. U.S. gas export capacity has tripled since 2018 and will double again in the next three years with a pause placed by Biden on new gas export licenses tossed aside by a Trump-appointed judge this month. So, uh, 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 of course, you know, Joe Biden trying to throw a bone to the greenies, uh, put a, you know, a pause on gas exports uh, till after the election, but even that little uh, bullshit move was tossed out by a Trump-appointed judge. Uh, the center of this frenzy of activity, talking, uh, they're, they're talking about uh, uh, gas, about uh, LNG in particular. Uh, at this point, the Guardian should have, you know, really made that clear. The center of this, you know, this gas exporting frenzy of ac activity is a slice of the Gulf Coast barely 50 miles long on either side of the Louisiana and Texas border. This small stretch rapidly being chewed away by some of the fastest rising seas in the world has 11, 11 LNG plants at various stages of operation and construction that, at capacity, will export more gas than Australia and Qatar, the next two largest LNG exporters after the U.S. combined. Heralded by the gas industry and even the Biden administration as a way to bolster European allies roiled by Russia's invasion of Ukraine or to help wean Asian countries off dirtier coal, LNG has its own huge climate cost. Drilling, transporting, cooling, shipping, and then ultimately burning the, this gas expels so much methane, a potent greenhouse gas, that the planet heating emissions of all 18 current and proposed U.S. export projects could equal the entire 
current carbon pollution of Europe. Okay, do we get it, guys? And, you know, kudos to The Guardian for spelling this out. A uh, venture global and oil and gas operator is at the vanguard, welcomed by the state of Louisiana with tax breaks and responsible for the Calcasieu Pass facility near the retired oil uh, industry engineer's property in Cameron, which started operation in 2022 but already has more than 2,000 violations in its first two years of its air quality permits through the release of nitrogen ox oxides, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, and other pollutants. A planned $10 billion extension called Calcasieu Pass 2 would shift about 20 million tons of LNG at capacity, single-handedly boosting U.S. gas exports by 20% and causing planet heating pollution equal to 46, 46 coal-fired power plants. Venture Global has hired two lobbying firms, one headed by former Biden aide Chris Putala, to tout the jobs and investment flowing from the project. But this has not stemmed a furious backlash from environmental groups that have labeled it, quote, climate vandalism. There are fears of mounting localized impacts, too, with poor communities and people of color bearing the brunt of industrial pollution along the Gulf Coast. Quote, approving CP2 would be signing our death certificate, said Rochetta Ozane, head of an environmental justice organization in nearby Lake Charles. Our air smells like rotten eggs, our water is polluted, our children are sick, our family members of, are dying of cancer. We can't take any more. Enough is enough. Close quote. Ozane's family has twice been displaced by hurricanes, which are being made fiercer by rising global temperature, other to... Others here, too, have suffered anguish from both the climate crisis and its cause. Travis Dardar, a shrimper, had to flee his home in low-lying Isle de Jeanne, Charles, Louisiana, because sea level rise was swamping it, uh, only to end up trying to ply the fisheries off Cameron. Yes. Quote, this used to be a beautiful place, but all the docks are gone now. The shrimp and crab have been poisoned and killed by all the dredging, Darter said. What sustained us for generations has gone. It's like an alien invasion. CP2 will be the nail in the coffin. It will finish everything off, but we're going to keep fighting it. Yes, Dardar Ozane and Alaire, the retired oil industry engineer, are part of a loose-knit coalition trying to halt the stampede of gas with the retired oil industry engineer acting as a sort of frontline general, his trailer festooned with maps, photos, and documents of the industry's ills, a truck with a sticker reading Stop LNG sitting outside. Yes, this coalition has traveled to protest in New York City and Washington, D.C., filed complaints, implored the Biden administration to do more. 
Yes. The actor Jane Fonda, a hugger, according to the retired oil industry engineer, has visited in support. Quote, I have been a huge pain in the backside for them, said the retired oil engineer speaking of Venture Global and Commonwealth, the company that wants to build the latest gas plant next door. He estimates his complaints have cost the developer millions of dollars to remedy the dumping of sludgy waste and to preserve local sand dunes. Uh, in, in, anyway, guys, I'm sorry. This goes on and on and on. Uh, so I'm just going to jump uh, to the end of this never-ending story about the retired oil industry engineer fighting the gas industry in his, in his backyard. <coughs> The, the oil industry ex, ex, uh, engineer's small haven is shrinking, however. Allaire estimates he has lost about 30 or 40 acres of the property since buying it in 1990, 1989, eroded away by the relentless rising seas. Stalks of tall grass and withered trees poke up from the surf offshore. Remarkably, they were on solid land just six months ago. <clears throat> Should Commonwealth build its LNG plant next door, complete with a towering wall to keep the Gulf of Mexico at bay just long enough for them to make a few billion more dollars, the retired oil engineer said he will concede, defeat, and move. Until then, he ha ha he ha. Until then, he ha ha hopes to at least slow things down a bit. Said the retired oil industry engineer once. It's all over these LNG guys, you, you know, just exactly like the oil guys before them. Once it's all over, these LNG guys will just walk away. And what will be left behind? We're left with a mess. The area permanently destroyed. It is all Bullshit, if you ask me, said the retired oil industry engineer. And if you want to know how many comments from that story, if your answer was one, and it was not from Humpty Dumpty, what was the one comment on that story uh, one comment so how is it the price of a gallon of gasoline is so high yes anyway uh Seems the elite still have control, and we pay, baby pay. <laughs> anyway, that was going to be part of my uh, ain't going to happen roundup rant, but I will uh, try to get to the rest of the ain't going to happen rant either tonight Although I might be a day late with the AGH Roundup. We shall see if the Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant's gonna happen or not. But right now I gotta get back to being a vacation rental super host on this gorgeous day on the planet. Well, I still can. Bye, guys.